Hello everyone, today I'll be doing a solo Nightfall Master Run, Scarlet Keep with Hunter. For my subclass, I'll be using the Night Stalker Top Tree with Gambler's Dodge. For my kinetic weapon, I'll be using the Arbalist Linear Fusion Rifle. Next, I'll be using the Stars and Shadow Pulse Rifle. For my heavy, I'll be using the Seven Seraph Soul Machine Gun. For my helmet, I'll be using the Exotic Worm Husk Crown with Linear Fusion Rifle Ammo Finder, Machine Gun Ammo Finder, Global Reach, and Mobility. Next, I'll be using Pulse Rifle Loader, Anti-Barrier Pulse Rifle, Fire Team Medic with 10 Recovery. Next, I'll be using Linear Fusion Rifle Reserves, Arc Damage Resistance, High Energy Fire with 5 Recovery. Next, I'll be using Linear Fusion Rifle Scavenger, Machine Gun Scavenger, Shield Break Charge with 10 Mobility. Next, I'll be using the Mobility Mod, the Momentum Siphon, Incinerating Light, I'll be using the Condenser Artifact Mod where it can stagger Unstoppable Champions and along with the Momentum Siphon where you can recharge your melee ability whenever you or your fire team staggers the Unstoppable Champion. Alright guys, so for this video, I'll be using the Arbalest Linear Fusion Rifle and I gotta say this Arbalest Lunar Fusion Rifle can actually take down any elemental shield, especially with the Arc Knights. So, I'll be showing you definitely at the boss fight of what this Lunar Fusion Rifle can do. And it's a possibility that it could be bug because I was reading the TWAB from Thursday and they were mentioning about the Arbalest Lunar Fusion Rifle where they're going to fix something or do some tweaks with it and i really hope they don't because if they do then this linear fusion rifle will be useless once again because i remember the last time i used this linear fusion rifle it took around two to three shots to take down any elemental shields There is a barrier champion on the left side. I'd like to first take down the acolytes since they are the most annoying throughout this room. And then once I do, I can take down the barrier champion with the Arbalest fusion rifle or linear fusion rifle. Once I do, I can use my finisher. Then take down a couple of adds throughout this entire room. There is also a wizard on the left side. As you can see there, it is spamming its arc attack. And you can actually take down the shield as you saw there. And then you can do critical hit shots. So this linear fusion rifle is actually stronger than Xenophage when dealing with critical hit shots or in other words precision shots with any enemies wizards champions bosses etc so once we do that then we can safely take down the adds or the acolytes which they do like to scatter and hide so once we take them down with the war myself then we're gonna deal with more barrier champions. There's like around 20 or more. I lost count it, to be honest. And we're gonna deal with the right anti-barrier champion. So I like to use my arc machine gun. Once I do try my best to clear down the acolytes, cause they do like to throw fire at you and it can be extremely, extremely accurate when throwing it. So I was first taking it down, made a war mine cell, you can actually use your linear fusion rifle to destroy it. 
Once I take down the Acolytes, then I do DPS on the Barrier Champion. And you can see there that it likes to shoot from far away, and I can dodge his arc attack as well. Once I do that, then we'll be proceeding to the next area. Once I clear down the ads, then I deal with the next champion. I like to pop a super and just clear a couple of acolytes. You can also tether the anti-barrier champion as well. As you can see here, he walks through the trap. And of course you can see that sometimes this very champion likes to pull back with the snipers and a couple of adds. So it can be a little annoying to deal with this barrier champion at times. I decided to pull back since there are going to be a couple of thralls pushing towards me. Once I clear down the ad, the champion walks back to where it was and you can do DPS and take it down quickly. So yeah, this barrier champion sometimes has a mine of his own. I still think Xenophage is the best loadout to do this knife up. Since Xenophage has no critical hit shot, since you can body shot barrier champions, bosses very easily than the linear fusion rifle where you need to do critical hits. So now there'll be a couple of snipers up ahead and what I like to do is take down the wizard which you'll see really soon. So once I do, I, I take down the Warmind Cell and then do critical hit shots with the Linear Fusion Rifle. As you can see there, sometimes I can miss my shots, so it can sometimes be a little headache. So what I did is I just wait until I can do some critical hit shots, but unfortunately the wizard likes to move around and spam its spam a bubble where it can damage you rapidly. So once I take it down, I clear down the ads over here. And then we can proceed to pick up the orb charges and dunk it. So to make the champions appear, you must pick up the orb charge halfway so ads can spawn. So once you do, you can drop the orb charge and then deal with the ads. Of course, you can multitask just like Sapphire and Song where you can carry the orb charge and of course deal with the champion and the acolytes. But because togetherness is on, I decided to just leave it. Now if this Nightfall didn't have togetherness, if it was chaff or famine, then I would multitask to deal with the barrier champions. And of course the adds as well. Once I take down the barrier champion, I decide to go pick up the orb from the other side. So we're gonna deal a couple of thralls and there is gonna be an arc knight which it can be a little bit annoying. I always like to take it down quickly since they can kill you with the arc attack. 
So there'll be a wizard up ahead. You can actually take it down the shield with your Arvalus or with your pulse rifle and do critical hit shots to take it down. So I pull back since these acolytes like to throw a fire at me. And once I do, I could proceed to pick up the orb charge and then drop it halfway so I can make the barrier champions to spawn. So yes, this knife is going to be pretty slow, pretty long. And this knife has always been long since the beginning. I remember when I did this solo run the first time, it took me forever. And I remember it was, it was a little struggle here and there. So there's going to be a barrier champion up ahead and you can actually take it down from up this roof. Once you stagger the barrier champion, you can use your linear fusion rifle to do critical hit shots and take it down quickly or with your pulse rifle if you if you are low on special. So once I cleared down the champion, I decided to take some time to take down the acolytes. So now what I can do is first take down the Cursed Thralls, then once I do, I can go back and pick up the Orb Charges, which I would do a mini time skip because it's going to take like a minute and 30 seconds. And let's be honest, no one wants to see me running around the map picking up these Orb Charges. It's a little boring. So yeah, once you clear down the Cursed Thralls, then you pick up the orb charges, both of them, and dump them from left and right. Alright, so once we dunk the orb charge, now we can proceed to the next area. We're just going to be unstoppable champion, a couple of adds, and arc knights. So what I like to do is use my super and just spam my arc machine gun. I try my best to take down the arc knights since they can be a big problem and they can actually push towards you and melee you with their sword. So you can see here I'm trying to get the war mine cell to destroy all the adds. So I decided to throw smoke and then dodge to turn invisible and to pull back. And then throw a smoke again to stagger it since we don't have any kinetic weapon to stagger it since we're using a linear fusion rifle. So once you stagger it, I decide to use my finisher and then proceed to the next section. By the way guys, this is actually the PS5 version for Destiny 2 and I gotta say I really like it. My eyes do hurt when I play the game, so it's gonna take me a month to get used to it, especially with the field of view. So there are going to be a couple of snipers around this area, so I like to just spam my arc machine gun if I do have a couple of spare ammo to take them down so I can make a war mine cell and destroy it. Then there's going to be another wave of adds with two solar wizards from left and right. You can take them down with your linear fusion rifle or with just your pulse rifle if you're low on special weapon or special ammo. So acolytes, as you can see there, they like to throw, they like to throw fire very accurately, and you can see there that I dodge it. So I was trying to do critical hit shots on the wizard, and it was flying around, looping down like merry-go-round. Sometimes these wizards can do that just to troll you. I tried to take down the shield with the pulse rifle and then try to use my linear fusion rifle, but then decide to flow all the way in the back. Sometimes these wizards do that if you do not take them down quickly. So here's an example why it's enough age. It's better to use 
especially dealing with those wizards. I was trying to make a war mine cell, but unfortunately it fell down off the bridge. So sometimes little silly things can happen throughout this area, especially at the bridge. I was trying to take down the wizard and I finally did. Alright, I was just picking up some ammo, so I did a mini time skip. So now there's gonna be a Shrieker, two Acolytes, a couple of Acolytes, and a very annoying Barrier Champion where it likes to shoot far away, especially at the bridge, which can be super annoying. So there are two ways to do this. You can try to take down the Shrieker first and deal the Barrier Champion, or you can actually take down the Barrier Champion and then take down the Shrieker. So what I want to do is try to take down the barrier champion first and then the shrieker. And it can be a little annoying because sometimes this barrier champion likes to pull back especially when it's on low low health. So you can see here I'm trying to kill this barrier champion and he pull back. So, little things like this can happen, which can be super annoying. What I like to do is just take down the Shrieker first. So I was trying to take it down with the Linear Fusion Rifle. And once I take down the Shrieker, then I can take down the Barrier Champion. So the Shrieker can't see you. If you are on top tree and you turn invisible, the Shrieker cannot see you. But if you are on bottom tree on Night Stalker, then the Shrieker can see you and shoot you when you are invisible. That's another reason why I decided to go for top tree for Hunter, just to deal with the Shriekers. Now, if I was using Xenophage, then I would use bottom tree. Since Xenophage will be easier to take down the Shriekers than the Linear Fusion Rifle. So I'm just dealing with a couple of ads since I don't want them to disturb me when doing DPS at the Barrier Champion. So once I take down these ads, then I decide to do some DPS and take down this Barrier Champion, which it likes to move around from left and right. So you can see that it takes a pretty much decent damage on critical hits with the Linear Fusion Rifle. Now if I had Charge of Light, then the Linear Fusion Rifle can melt down the champions quite well. I'm trying to remember how much damage it does for Charge of Light. I think around 30% per critical hit. So now we finally took down the barrier champion and now you can deal with the snipers. Now these snipers can sometimes kill you so I highly recommend to take them down or you can just turn invisible and pass through these ads. I was clearing out an ad so I can get some kills and hopefully I can get a linear fusion rifle ammo for the next area. So I was just trying to do critical hits. So you can see there with Charge of Light, it's around 34k critical hit shots on the wizards. So I finally got some special ammo, which I was, which I wanted to do, so now we can clear down the Acolytes and the Barrier Champion from the left side. 
Now you can let this bear champion to run off. It will go all the way from the right side. Or you can just kill the champion right away. All depends what you want to do. For me, I decided to... Decide to take down the champion that will be walking near the left area. So, decide to take it down. And just take my time with it since it likes to shoot arc very far away. You can see there. You have to be very careful when dealing with these barrier knights. And that's another reason why I have arc resistance. So I can deal with these barrier champions much easier. And of course with the final boss since it likes to spam a lot of arc. I was just scouting for ammo, and now we're gonna proceed to the next area. Now we're gonna be dealing with the most annoying area of all, where we have to stand on three plates, and we're gonna deal with more champions. If you guys thought that that's all the champions throughout this nightfall, then I'm sorry to disappoint you, but we're gonna deal with more bear champions in this area, and I'm trying to remember how many are they, but it's around six barrier champions around here, and of course we're gonna deal with these wizards. I decided to use my super just to take down the wizard. Sometimes it could be buggy, you saw there that his health regain up, which was a little bit annoying. The why the health regain up by itself, even though I was doing DPS on it. So once you hit the plate room, a barrier champion will spawn along with a couple of acolytes from left and right. I decided to throw my nade and then just take them down quickly. That way I can take down the barrier champion. So I was just looking and seeing if I can kill them, and I did. And then once I do, I decided to take down the barrier champion that will be near the stairs. So this barrier champion likes to hide, especially behind the walls. So I waited patiently for this barrier champion to peek out so I can finally do some DPS on it. So I did critical headshots with the Arbalest Linear Fusion Rifle. The next playout where I like to go is from the far left side. So once we kill the barrier champion, then I decide to capture the plate. When you do capture the plate, then there will be a couple of snipers spawning, which I like to take them down quickly. That way they won't 30 shot me. Once I take down the snipers, I like to go to the far right side to capture the plate. So of course in every plate there are wizards, so what I like to do is take down the wizard and then take down the acolytes. And you can see there that it do like to throw fire a lot. And you saw there these acolytes like to hide, go hide and seek, especially behind walls. Which can be a little annoying. And that's why this knife will can just take some time. It's so slow. Once I capture the plate halfway, I decided to take down these acolytes and then deal with another champion. Yes, we're gonna deal with another barrier champion. Again, has it been a minute? Hasn't been two minutes or a minute and we're gonna deal with another barrier champion. You can actually do DPS behind the stairs to take cover, especially when they like to spam their arc. So once I did my finisher, I decided to capture the plate and then deal with the middle plate. I always capture the middle plate last since the middle plate is like the most annoying 
irritating plate where a lot of ads like to push you and then the wizard can kill you too if you're not too careful. Which is why I would recommend to take down the wizard quickly as possible, especially for this plate. So you can see there a lot of way a lot of ads spawn and I am trying to take down the wizard. So once I take down the wizard, I pull it back just to get some ammo. Then I decide to capture the plate. So sometimes when you're trying to DPS the wizard, all these acolytes decide to gain up and team up on you. I'm not even joking, but then they throw fire at you all at the same time. That's why I decided to pull back. That way they cannot throw fire at me and then I can take my time to, to clear down the ads. So I'm gonna do a mini time skip since I'm just clearing down the ads and it's a little boring. Alright, once you clear down all the acolytes, I like to capture the last plate. And now we're gonna deal with the final barrier champion, yeah. So there's around 1, 2, 3, 4, like around 4 to 5 barrier champions, 3 wizards, and a couple of acolytes, and a couple of snipers. I would deal with this one room, which can be so annoying. So I'm gonna go all the way in front of the back, and I'm gonna deal with the last barrier champion. Decide to go here, since there are two snipers that like to shoot you when trying to DPS at the barrier champion. I like to first take down the snipers first, and then clear down the barrier champion. So yeah, it could be a little irritating, especially dealing with these snipers since I, since they can snipe you from far away, which can be a little annoying. So once I do, I get ammo, and then we proceed to the next area. Alright, so now we just have to go to this area, which can be pretty long. Pretty long area where you have to keep running and jumping. Now there's going to be a couple of ads and another barrier champion from the right side. Well, from the left side, I mean. So there are a couple of acolytes, which I like to take them down, and also from the left side. So for me, I like to ignore the barrier champion since it will lag to the left side, which can be so annoying. So highly recommend just ignore the barrier champion. Trust me on that, it will lag to the left side. For some reason, I guess Bungie programmed it to move to the left side. That's the only thing I can think of, the explanation of why it does that. And now there's going to be around two snipers, which I like to take them down with the Arbalest. Once I do, I'm going to wait for the next sniper and of course deal with the barrier champion. This is one of the reasons why I don't like togetherness. It just makes this run so slow and you always have to be cautious. And if my health is low, I have to pull back, use the warm husk helmet for Hunter and get my health back. I decided to use finisher and proceed to the next area. Yeah, this knife fall is so long. This is one of the reasons why I don't really like making videos on this knife fall a lot. Because it's so long and with togetherness, it's much, much worse. So now there's going to be a couple of thralls and snipers. 
and I like to try my best to make a war mine cell so I can destroy it and kill the acolytes, the snipers, since they can they can kill you around this area pretty easily. Sadly, I miss one sniper, so you can see there that I miss one. And there is a barrier champion that you can kill, but unfortunately in this footage, I wasn't able to kill it fast. And when you don't kill the barrier champion quickly, it will move down to the middle area, which can take some time to take it down. So what I like to do is take down the barrier champion, but of course there are a lot of snipers and these snipers are no joke. They can mess up your DPS and kill you, especially around this area. So I was trying to make a war mine cell and unfortunately I wasn't able to make one with my arc machine gun. So you can see there I was just spamming the arbalist linear fusion rifle to try to take down these acolytes since they're the most annoying and they can mess up my DPS on the barrier champions. For the fire team, always take down the snipers first and then take down the barrier champion be much more easier then once you do that then you can have one of your teammates to be bait for the shrieker and then you can take down the shrieker quickly as well so i was just trying to take down the barrier champion and of course we're gonna deal with the shrieker very soon which is another reason why I prefer to go top tree, is to deal with the Shrieker. The Shrieker can be super annoying to kill, especially with a linear fusion rifle if you cannot do critical hit shots perfectly. So you can see there I missed and I had to pull back and go back again to do to deal with the Shrieker. And another funny reason is when the Shrieker did attack, then all these acolytes decide to push out of nowhere and then decide to pull back. Which can be a bit annoying, especially throughout this area. So now once again I try to do, do critical hits on the Shrieker, do a dodge, and then deal with the acolytes. So here I decided to just go back, get some ammo. So over here I decided to take down the barrier champion since it can be a little annoying to take it down. Once you do, then it'll be another barrier champion. Yes, another barrier champion up ahead, which is the most annoying barrier champion throughout this entire area. I like to use my super to take down the adds and then take down the barrier champion since these acolytes love to play hide and seek and they throw fire randomly and they can kill you as well. So now finally we're going to go to the slowest elevator in the entire Destiny 2 franchise. If you guys thought zero hour the elevator is slow, then this one is gonna really irritate you because this elevator is slower than the elevator from zero hour. So over here there's gonna be a couple of acolytes where you can actually just hide around this mini wall and then just wait for the elevator to go to the second floor 
And we're going to be dealing with this low, this really slow elevator. Probably around 10 minutes until the boss fight. So yeah, this nightfall is so slow. And it could be a little annoying. So there are two barrier champions from left and right, and of course a wizard. I like to first take down the acolytes from left and right first since they do like to shoot from far away. They're very aggressive. You can see in this footage that they don't seem aggressive. They are. I always take them down quickly since sometimes the both barrier champions can team up on you if you're all the way from the back. And then once I take down the acolytes, then I wanted to deal with the barrier champion. So I was trying to bait it. So it can move, I can kill it right away, and then deal with the wizard. So you can see here that I was just spamming my pulse rifle, just waiting for it to walk by so I can take it down. So yeah, of course, acolytes do like to peek and throw fire at you, and then of course the barrier champion can hide back again with the wizard, which can be a little irritating. When using the linear fusion rifle, you can just do one critical headshot on the barrier champion and then just switch to your pulse rifle to stagger it and then use your four remaining ammo on the champion. So you can see there, I was being a little reckless, so decided to first regain my health a bit and then deal with this barrier champion. So once I take down the barrier champion, I decided to take down the wizard. So what I like to do over here is take down the wizard and then make the barrier champion to move all the way from the right side. So over here I was just waiting for the wizard so I can finally do some DPS and take it down. Once I do, shields will be off and the bear champion will move. So I waited for the bear champion to move and then finally I can do some DPS with it, with the uh, linear fusion rifle. So now I'm just doing critical hit shots with the linear fusion rifle. You can actually take your time over here. There's really no rush as long as you don't break the crystal. Now if you break the crystal, then you have to avoid going to the elevator platform where it can move, especially if you go in the middle. Now I'm just collecting ammo and then I will be going to the elevator. So a mini time skip. So now we're gonna go to the slowest elevator again and I'm just using my emote so I can see my surroundings especially on PS5 you can see much better than on PS4 so you could just move from left and right and then just avoid these attacks now I was thinking doing the time skip over here but then again I thought about the warlock and titan run so I decided to just, I decided to leave this footage, especially for fire teams, titans, and warlocks, since they don't have the visibility to protect themselves throughout the elevator. So now there's going to be unstoppable champion, and I like to first take down the acolytes and wait for the champion to push. You can see there I pop a smoke and decide to do critical hits on the unstoppable champion now you can see that this unstoppable champion is super aggressive 
and I was being a little bit cautious. So if I was actually way too close to the bear, I mean, if I was actually way too close to the unstoppable champion, then he could stop me and it would be a wipe throughout this nightfall. So you can actually dodge near the wizard, by the way, to get your gambler's dodge back. And once you do, you can just proceed to do DPS at the Unstoppable Champion again. I was just waiting for my dodge invisibility to charge up just in case if anything goes wrong. So I took down the Unstoppable Champion and now we're going to deal with a couple adds which can be a little bit annoying. Now there is a bunch of acolytes from left and right. I like to just slowly take my time taking down the adds from left and right. Because sometimes they can shoot you from behind and it can be a little bit irritating. And you can see there that the wizard can shoot his toxic bubble even from far away. So you definitely have to be careful with it. You can see there that the Acolyte was about to throw a fire at me, but then it cancelled its attack. So now we're going to deal with the wizard, so I like to do critical hit shots. And then take it down. And like I said in my video, you can actually take down the shield with the linear fusion rifle. For me, I decided to use pulse rifle. Reason why is because since I have since I have charge of light, I can shoot the solar shield on the wizard and get 20% damage on my kinetic weapon. So next, what I'd like to do is deal with the next wizard, which it likes to hide. So I use my pulse rifle and then do critical hit shots. And sometimes this wizard likes to hide. You can see there and there are a couple of acolytes as well. So once I do that, I just look for more ammo and then just go back to the elevator. So for here, once we shoot the crystal, we're going to go to the slowest elevator throughout the Destiny franchise, worse than zero hour. So I like to go through behind this wall and there will be a couple of acolytes trying to shoot you down. So, if you're on Warlock or Titan, you can actually go behind this wall safely. Now, you could put a Healy Rift or a Barricade, but unfortunately, when going up through the elevator, your Barricade or Healing Rift will clip through the elevator, sadly. Which can be a little annoying, I was hoping Bungie can fix it. But sadly, I don't think they're ever going to do. So there are two wizards and I like to take down the first wizard quickly. So the second one sometimes likes to sneak up on you, which you can see here. It loves to sneak up on you when you are trying to do DPS on the first wizard. If it does that, then you can pull back. So once I take down the wizard, I decide to just use primary on the second wizard. So I'm going to do a mini time skip since this is going to take a while of just doing primary. Alright guys, so once we take down the wizard, we're going to have the boss spawning. So what I like to do is go to the safe spot. And I like to do some critical hits at the boss so we'll have a so we can deal with a couple of wave of ads. So over here we're gonna deal with the wave of ads, which we hear a sound in the background. 
So there's going to be a couple acolytes and arc knights. You can actually take them down with your machine gun or with the linear fusion rifle. Once you take down a couple of adds, you can deal DPS on the boss. So I was trying to do critical hits at the boss, but it was shooting and spamming his arc attack. And sometimes the boss can do that. So I was hearing a arc knight shooting at me, so I was trying to see if I can get rid of the arc knight. Sometimes Arc Knights can push you through the safe spot, so I would like to say to always be careful when dealing with these Arc Knights. You can actually take them down with the Linear Fusion Rifle. So you can see there that sometimes these Arc Knights can shoot you, and you must be careful dealing with them. Now there are a couple of Acolytes that you can shoot down, and of course there is another Arc Knight which they can be a little bit annoying, but with using the Linear Arbalest Fusion Rifle, you can take down the shield with one blow and do critical hit shots with the special weapon. Once you take down all the Arc Knights and the Acolytes, you can take down the Wizard. And the wizard loves to spam its arc attack. Once you do a specific amount of health on the wizard, its shield will spawn up and there will be another wave of adds where we have to deal with two wizards. So I was just waiting for the boss to move so I could do critical headshots with the linear fusion rifle. So once a shield is back on, there will be two wizards. For me, I like to, of course, use my super very soon and take down the wizard as quickly as possible where this wizard can actually kill you on the safe spot. So I like to try my best to do critical headshots with the linear fusion rifle or spam my arc machine gun if I have a couple extra ammo. Once you do, there will be another solo wizard that likes to be close by to the boss. And you can see there, it likes to spam his arc. And you can actually get out from the safe spot and collect the ammo. And then deal with the solar wizard very soon. So you can actually take your time just using your primary weapon. So I decided to do that. I wanted to save my linear fusion rifle for the next mini wave of adds. So the wizard was low on health, so I decided to go back to my safe spot and then take down the wizard so I could take down the shield as well. So I do critical headshots on the wizard and once I do, there will be another wave of adds spawning. And it's going to be once again a couple of Arc Knights, which we despise, but you can actually take them down with your Linear Fusion Rifle very quickly. With critical hit shots. So once again, what I like to do is break the shield, get Charge of Light, and then just do two headshots on the Arc Knight. The Arbalus is actually stronger than Xenophage. Really surprising. I really hope they don't really nerf it, especially when dealing with the elemental shields. And I really do like the fact that you can one-shot the shields. Like, that's very unique. 
but like I said, it is possibility that Bungie can nerf it, and it'll probably be three shots to break down elemental shields. And if it does, then this linear future rifle will once again be not so, not so useful as of now. So you can actually go to the safe spot once again, and what I like to do is wait for the boss to pull back a bit, and then I can do critical hits so we can deal with the second wave of adds where we have to deal with two unstoppable ogres. So now we're going to deal with another wave of adds, a couple of Arcanites, Acolytes, Cursed Rolls, and Unstoppable Champions. Now this one could be a little tricky, so I would recommend to be careful, especially over here. So what I like to do is throw a smoke and then try to kill the Unstoppable Champion as soon as possible. If Unstoppable Champion, especially two, if they both push at the same time, you must pull back and wait, crouch down, and wait for them to back away. Especially you can see here that Acolytes can throw fire at you even if you're on your safe spot. So now you can see that the unstoppable champion back up and I am going to try to kill it and throw a smoke so I can stagger it. So I was just waiting for the champion to walk by a bit so I can do some DPS. And you can see there, once I stagger it, I try to do critical hit spot, it's critical hit shots. And I pull back away since the cursed roll. It seemed like it was going to push towards me and explode, but then it changed his mind and backed away. And decided to throw my smoke again, but it missed. So, I had to wait for my smoke to come back. You can also do a dodge to get your melee back as well. So now what I'm doing is trying to lower the unstoppable champion to walk towards me and I was trying to do a smoke as well. But these cursed thrall was kind of messy on my DPS which can be a little bit annoying. So you can see there I was trying to do critical hits on the unstoppable champion and get rid of the first one. So I finally got rid of the unstoppable champion and now I will have to deal with the last one. Once I do, I can finally get out of the safe spot and deal with a couple of ads. So over here, I was just trying to bait it. And you can actually throw smoke in the ground. And once you do, you can just do critical hits once you stagger it. So you can see there that it's not really safe to throw your smoke again once and stagger, you have to wait until it resets its animation where it becomes aggressive and tries to kill you, which can be annoying of using the smoke to stagger these unstoppable champions. So what you can do is get a gambler's dodge and then you can bait the Unstoppable Champion again. Once you take down the Unstoppable Champion, then you can go out or shoot down a couple of Acolytes with your Arc Machine Gun or Pulse Rifle. So now what I like to do is get ready for the next DPS. So I was thinking of trying to do a one phase at the boss, 
but unfortunately I wasn't able to make it. But if you are on bottom tree, then you can one face the boss with the linear fusion rifle and with the super. So once you kill the last ad, the shield will break and you can use your super to do DPS. So here I was trying to do critical hits with the linear fusion rifle, but then it moved to the left. I wasn't able to do the one phase. So if you are not able to do the one phase, then you'll be dealing with a couple of Arcanites and Acolytes. What I like to do over here is get rid of the Arcanites first. I like to just spam my linear fusion rifle and get rid of them as soon as possible. So you can see here you can use your linear fusion rifle and of course sometimes they like to pop their shield and get their health back. And then try to deal with the couple of adds. So you can see here there is another Arcanite that likes to hide around. You can also take it down with the linear fusion rifle. Another thing I like to mention is this boss likes to teleport you. That's another reason why I was on the cheese spot. You can actually dodge the boss when it tries to teleport you or slide. I think dodging is more efficient than sliding because sometimes if you slide then it will not work. I did some DPS at the boss and took it down with the linear fusion rifle. So there you go guys. Thank you so much for watching. So the linear fusion rifle Opalus actually very powerful and more powerful than Xenophage. But like I said in my video, it's a possibility that Bungie might nerf the one-shot shield with the Obelisk Linear Fusion Rifle. And I was reading a TWAB that they were going to do some tweaks with it. And I think they're going to nerf it or in other case fix the bug. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.